Welcome back. President Obama took an oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. But with regard to his actions over the past years, has he pushed the constitutional envelope hard and kept his oath of office? Here now, President Obama's top constitutional violations of 2013 is Florida International University constitutional law professor Elizabeth Price Foley. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, Peter. Great to be with you. Uh, I'm happy you're here. Now, you believe that the president has violated the Constitution in a few ways. The first way you say is with regard to Obamacare. Supreme Court upheld Obamacare. How has he violated the Constitution with regard to Obamacare? Oh, how much time do we have? Well, we got uh, about so 30 seconds. Go ahead. Go. <laughs> yeah, you know, the five biggest constitutional violations by the president have been in Obamacare, you know, which, as you know, is the signature legislation of the president. And it's basically sort of become a playground for him to try out an imperial presidency. So you say so he, one he, of the he's blown he away the employer, employer mandates. He didn't keep his word on that. That's right. He delayed that for one year with the stroke of a pen because the uh, employers basically protested that it was too difficult. Uh, he also decided, you know, uh, unilaterally that he was going to grant Congress an exception. Uh, the law says that Congress members and uh, their staff have to buy their health insurance through ex uh, the Obamacare exchanges. Uh, he said that they don't have to do that. They can continue to get it through the Federal Employees Health Benefits Program. And they continue to enjoy the generous subsidies they've always enjoyed. Uh, and these are kinds of subsidies they wouldn't have to pay. All right, Professor, let's talk about the exchanges. Absolutely. Let's talk about so called recess appointments. Has the president okay. kept. Uh, faith with the Constitution with regard to making recess appointments. This is going to the Supreme Court, his conduct, isn't it? That's right. On January 13th, the Supreme Court's going to hear oral argument in a case called Noel Canning. And uh, the question is whether or not the president can appoint members to executive agencies uh, when the Senate is not in recess. Article 2 says he has the power to fill vacancies that happen when the Senate is in recess. But guess what? The Senate wasn't in recess. No other president has ever attempted to fill a vacancy when the Senate wasn't in recess. The D.C. Court of Appeals said that's unconstitutional. And I expect the Supreme Court to say the same thing. Professor so let's finish up with this one. The president gives a lot of lofty speeches about the power of the First Amendment. Is he keeping faith with the First Amendment or is he disregarding it? Uh, far from it. I mean, this is a president that's using his executive power to basically chill speech with which he disagrees right. politically. Prime example is the IRS scandal, where basically he was using the power of the Internal Revenue Service to provide special scrutiny to Tea Party and other conservative groups because he wanted to shut them down and stop them from speaking prior to the 2012 election. Uh, he's doing the same thing with universities. He's got a new speech code that universities have to abide by, which basically says that any utterance that offends someone one that's of a, on a sexual topic is to be considered sexual harassment. So any kind of joke, any kind of play, even flirtatious banter uh, could in fact uh, be prosecuted by these universities. That's a violation of students and faculties and staff's uh, First Amendment rights. In our last 10 or 15 seconds, you also talk about the mini Dream Act. Tell us how he's kept faith or not in the last few seconds, Professor. Yeah, you know, this is an act that basically would provide amnesty for certain young people who were brought to this country illegally by their parents. Congress refused to pass this law. The president was mad at that and his political base was mad. So with a stroke of a pen, he decided he was going to enact uh, the law himself unilaterally. And basically he's refusing, refusing to deport any young person uh, who he says meets certain DREAM Act criteria. So basically he's enacted a law all by himself. Professor Elizabeth Price Foley, a brilliant law professor and a great communicator. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you again soon. Great. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate it.